far. We've been traveling far without a home, but not without a star. Free, only want to be free. We huddle close, hang on to that dream. On the boats and on the planes, we come into America, never looking back again. We come into America. Got a dream and take us there. He come into America. Had a dream and come to share. He come into America. Home. Don't it seem so far away? But we're traveling light today. Through the eye of the storm, yeah. Through the eye of the storm Home To a new and a shiny place We say our prayers and we'll say our grace Freedom's light burning warm, yeah Freedom's light burning warm That's right, it's the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament and Flush has started the United States of America right here in the Great Paint Plains. If you remember last time, uh, Giraffe's Mongolians had just amassed there in order to defend the Great Plains, Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, um, maybe Kansas, though Kansas isn't that great. I guess neither is Nebraska uh, from the modern state there. Um, the United States came and converted them all. They said, look at us. For the United States of America, why don't you join us? And they said, okay, we'll do that. And lo, there came Thomas Edison in the form of Baron von Krull to lead the Americans along with his lackey Brad. Um, <laughs> that was actually randomly drawn, but I think that that's pretty fitting uh, to have those two there. So this is a, this is going to be a force to reckon with. I, I can imagine the United States staying around till the end of the game unless something bad happens to them. Uh, things are always different in seven by seven ages and seven ages because we don't we have the the different cultural things. In the United States, all they have is some bricks right now, but they have an impressive military. They had a lot of money, or they they had a decent amount of money to start off with, and then they were able to convert five units all in one go. It was a, it was a good timing by flush. So for turn upon turn now, the Persians have been slowly making their ways through the mountains to try and uh, get a shot at the Russians. They finally made it there, uh, Run even augmented the attack with a barrage card, but they were rebuffed and they even lost, um, they lost a knight in the effort. Problem is, you have to leave someone behind every space, so, you know, the army thins out as they go. Uh, Rudd did get rid of one of the Russian, um, science cards. I guess that's something, but not really going to put much of a dent in them. Still, there's this threat there, and that's got to be annoying to flush. It's the Koreans' turn to maneuver. They are going to have a hard time of it. Uh, the Mongolians were able to produce production happens before maneuver. Um, they had a card that let them get a ton of money, and so they were able to really build up this city here, which would have been a possible target for the Koreans. Uh, is, is very well defended. I don't think there's any hope for the Koreans to get a shot at that. Um, and the way down down southward towards Mongolia, which would be another good objective, uh, is also troublesome. Koreans might be a non-starter if unless they can, uh, yeah. So I just want to show you the situation before Flush makes any choices so you can see what he's up against. A wall of purple, a circle of purple. And a fairly uneventful turn has ended. What's happened? Well, the Japanese, they, they landed in Gyeongsi. There they had some subs out here, which lost, got lost first to a typhoon, uh, compliments of Flush's Russians, and then to some storms, which Runt to put down that uh, took out a sub here, and then also a ship here and a ship here. So they have attained the mainland. Now remember, these are the Mongols, which are also in, in uh, giraffes control. 
the Japanese and the Mongols are both giraffes, so the, I, I think the idea is that they're going to get out of the Japanese's way and let them take these nice wheat areas that will help them score. Um, what else happened? The Sp Spaniards, they spread out. Just so, some mild maneuvers, not really a whole lot. The Koreans ended up not really moving. They, they just kind of reinforced this space, moved a guy over there going to try to play defensively. There's really wasn't a lot of choice there. Um, the Mongols have a military advantage and they had more units so it would have been, Flush felt like it would be pretty silly to just attack them. Um, oh, Giraffe took the point penalty by have, for having two maneuvers. She had Spain and Japan. That's about it. Looking at the scoreboard we're seeing a similar story here with Flush. Approaching a deadline. Okay. He is in the final two and this time he's down again in points. I don't know if he can catch up this time. Giraffe has him pretty solidly. Uh, look, let's look at his point scoring. The Russians are pretty decent. He, If he produces and then maneuvers, he'll have India as well, which will be another point for them. Um, if he can get some more units in Asia, maybe he can start scoring that again. Um, he definitely has Europe locked up for now. Though he has the Spanish and the Persians coming at him. They're not, neither of them are very big... Uh, very big problems. Uh, United States might be his big, his his nice, his big hope there. Uh, there's not a lot of resistance in North America, although the modern state has built up and they have tanks. They're the furthest along. They're the only ones with tanks. Tanks seem like they should do pretty well. I know there's some special tank rules. I'll have to brush up on what those are. Um, they might not even apply with with this game, I don't know. And the Mongols, not a lot of resistance there, but a huge stack. So if he can if he can manage to score with them, what does he need to do? Well, he needs to spread out. Um, he needs to get to the water, which is kind of competing with the Japanese, which might be a problem, especially since he chose to be in the heartland and not on the coast. Um, yeah, so he just he needs to spread out. If he can spread out over the United States a good bit and beat back the Mongolians, because they're the I think they're, yeah, they're the biggest Christian nation right now, but they also have the Pharaonic Egyptians, which are also Christians, that would be trouble. But if you can just spread out, uh, he can start getting some more points, <coughs> get some money with them. He's got some double up on the, the money track though, with the Koreans in the United States. Flesh maybe needs, a, needs to get a different empire going if he wants to survive. I'm gonna try and get another turn in here. This turn has seen trade pick back up. Everyone chose trade and progress. First it was the Russians who are way far back. Um, frankly, and I'm gonna be very frank with you right now. I hope, hope you're ready for this. Um, Flesh is only keeping them for their points. He's really, he really doesn't know what else to do with them. He can't, he's having a hard time expand with them because he, he had to bunch up down here to protect against the Persians uh, and he doesn't really have any units to expand with. Uh, they're a tough counter set but not a numerous counter set and that's that's trouble. He needs to kind of redistribute his troops if he if he hopes to get to India. But he can't, he feels like he can't really get rid of them now because they're his, his big scorer. They're not even a big scorer, but they're scoring something, and he really needs points. Uh, so they want to trade against the Mongols. The Mong then the Spanish, they traded with... I don't even remember... Um, Oh, they traded with the Pharaonic Egyptians, and they won that trade. Oh, and I, I, I forgot, I should talk a little bit more about the Mongolian trade. The Mongolian trade, one of the interesting things about it was that it caused the Mongol leaders all to go away. And there's three big leaders. They were scoring a lot for for giraffes, so it kind of served two purposes for flesh. It brought the Russians a little bit further, gave them something to do, though it's going to take them a while before they get more units, right? There's this whole dark ages before you get more units. Um, but it also got rid of all three of the Mongolian leaders. They all died of old age. So there was that. Um, so then the Spanish, they want to trade. Uh, Giraffe wants, wants to get here now. You know, she's, she's well ahead of flesh. She's militarily not that bad, but she's seeing the Franic Egyptians getting stronger. Um, she feels like, you know, as soon as possible, if she can get flesh out of there, she can focus on runt and maybe have a chance of winning this thing. Um, and then the modern state runs kind of thinking the same thing. Now she's not so sure which one she'd rather go against. Now that the United States of America is here, um, she knows how mighty they are with their Baron and their Brad. 
a lot will depend on their first maneuvers, which are which are going to be coming up actually next. They're going to be maneuvering right now. If they if they get good traction, they're going to be trouble. If they get stopped early on, they're not going to be trouble. So a lot's going to depend on what flush decides right now. But regardless, there we are in the progress. We're getting close, getting very close. Unfortunately for the United States of America, they overslept. Giraffe was saving this car. She figured this was a good time to use it. Uh, slow, slow them down, slow flush down. Not a bad move. Oh, that means they don't do anything. They just passed. And having nothing to do with the uh, slaughter at the hands of the Mongols, the Koreans discarded themselves at the end of the round. That decision was made prior to the Mongols' assault. They uh, took Vladivostok pretty pretty easily. Um, got a, got some great roles, really. Uh, although Giraffe did have better odds. They it was a it was a it was slaughter. It was not. Not a, they did the Koreans did not put up a good fight, which is sad. There was a, there was a lot of potential there. Um, I don't know how Flush could have done that better though. I guess that that big production action really helped Giraffe quite a bit to um, to reinforce. If if Flush, if Flush had more time with the Koreans, Flush hasn't had a lot of time in this whole game. It feels like he's always fighting for his life. But if he had more time, he could just keep using them as his destiny empire and keep pulling in ten every time. And eventually, they would have the most money and get and uh, you know start scoring on that because the Koreans score on money. One reason he decided to get rid of them, well, one is that they were surrounded by the Japanese and the Mongols, and he didn't think they would stay around. And two, the United States also scores on money. And three, there's a you know there's a lot of other people that have a lot more money than the Koreans. It just would have been hard to make them work. He was hoping maybe the Mongols he could get the Mongols to go away and then spread out in Northeast Asia and that would work. But that did not work out for him. Rough turn for Flush. Not being able to use the United States this turn definitely slowed him down point wise. He was he was hoping to be able to expand out. He probably could have got the majority in North America, which would have been another two points for him. Um, and yeah, I think that's all it would have scored him, but still that would have given him something. The United States don't score anything unless they, you know, unless they've spread out. They don't have that, that homeland icon like so many others do. So interesting, interesting stuff happening. It, it feels like it's not going to be too much longer. I, I can't, I don't foresee the modern state, um, being discarded. And I also don't think that they are going to get destroyed, um, Unless the runt really wants to, I don't know why she would. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think even the United States can get rid of them. They're they're too strong for that. They could probably push him back, but I don't think they can get rid of them. All right, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Flush usually doesn't discard an empire unless he has another one coming. So I I, I want to see what he has. I don't I don't actually know. Um, next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament, seven by seven ages.